What makes you such a Mandingo expert? These are the most perplexing and provocative characters of cinema. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 controversial movie characters. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're focusing on movie characters that provoke viewers with their peculiar dialogue and behavior. Now well, that's a good idea. Number 10, Reagan McNeil, The Exorcist. What an excellent day for an exorcism. Portrayed by an adolescent Linda Blair, this character is known for her frightening transformation while possessed by a demonic spirit. When a priest arrives for a much-needed exorcism, the possessed version of Reagan McNeil does not respond positively. It's a heavy role for any actress, teen or otherwise, and the character's profanity-laced dialogue continues to shock decades after the film's release. Your mother sucks cocks in hell, Karis. Reagan's caught in a battle between the sacred and the profane, and her infamous crucifix moment disturbingly blends horror with religion. She's a good girl gone bad, but it's through no fault of her own. That's much too vulgar display of power, Karis. Number 9. Jang kyung Shul. I Saw the Devil. In this South Korean classic, a serial killer battles a grieving agent out for revenge. Throughout, viewers receive a thorough portrait of Jang Kyung Shul, a bus driver that tortures with no mercy whatsoever. Blood and gore are par for the course, but Kyung Shul is steeped in torture porn and is both predator and victim. Early on, he murders the fiancé of agent Kim Soo Hyun, who refuses to use legal means to lock up Kyung Chul. As a result, the roles are reversed, leaving viewers to grapple with all the graphic violence, along with each man's warped sense of justice and revenge. <laughs> Number 8. Borat Sagdiev. Borat. Kazakhstan is the greatest country in the world. This Kazakh journalist is half truth and half fiction. Here, Sasha Baron Cohen plays Borat, a delusional man that hopes to marry an American sex symbol, Pamela Anderson. Along the way, Borat receives an education from the real Americans, who provide genuine reactions to the character's unique behavior. That suit is black. Not. Uh, this suit is not black. No, no, not has to be the end. Borat was designed to provoke unsuspecting subjects, and his tactics challenge American values while revealing the ugly side of racial politics. Okay, I don't know what you're saying, man! What? That's cool! Borat walks and talks like a naive journalist, but it's Cohen's comedic timing that reveals the true ignorance of the film's subjects. In 2009, the actor would create more controversy by perpetuating LGBTQ stereotypes with Bruno. What is that? DNG. What is DNG? Torche and Cabana, hello? Number seven, Bill Maplewood, Happiness. I know it's my fault. No, honey, it's my fault. In Todd Solon's polarizing film, Dylan Baker plays a man with a disturbing secret. Bill Maplewood is a pedophile, and he sexually abuses two of his son's schoolmates before the police connect the dots. For a film labeled as a comedy drama, Bill's storyline can easily offend unsuspecting viewers, yet it highlights a troubling reality in society. When you ever me, no. Jerk off instead. Furthermore, the character's dark dialogue contrasts with the film's lighter moments, making Bill a movie character that most won't forget. His words, and certainly his actions, remind viewers that real life monsters often go unnoticed. And how is this different? I don't kill myself at the end. Number six, Mudflap and Skids Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Hey, Mudflap. What are we gonna do with this shrimp taco? These Autobots come from space, but their accents are rooted in North American street slang. In Michael Bay's blockbuster sequel, twin robotic brothers Mudflap and Skids talk trash and overtly play into hip hop stereotypes. And while Mudflap is voiced by African American Reno Wilson, Skids is voiced by Caucasian actor Tom Kenny, best known as the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants. Green is mine, I call green. Hurt, it's supposed to hurt. It's an ass kicking. Many critics and viewers have pointed out the racial undertones as the comedic relief is steeped in cliches rather than original ideas. Mudflaps and skids were designed to entertain younger viewers, but their manner of speech blurs the line between humor and tastelessness. 
Oh, look, we can't sashay him back. Number five, Frank Booth, Blue Velvet. Hey, you want to go for a ride? No, thanks. In David Lynch's 80s classic, Dennis Hopper plays a man with more than a few quirks. But Frank Booth is not your typical bad guy, evidenced by his aggressive behavior and psychotic demeanor. He's incredibly violent, and his perversions are equally disturbing. Do you know what a love letter is? It's a bullet from a f gun. F There's no explanation for Booth's maniacal ways, and it's the underlying mystery that makes him so terrifying. In one particularly troubling sequence, Frank reveals his mommy issues and a love for an unknown gas. Mommy. <laughs> He's a highly bizarre character, which says a lot in the always controversial world of David Lynch. <laughs> Number four, she, Antichrist. You Portrayed by Charlotte Gainsbourg, this character experiences unfathomable pain. The film itself is part one of Lars von Trier's loose Depression trilogy, featuring the coping mechanisms of a couple dealing with their son's death. She faces her greatest fears, and she also finds temporary relief by inflicting physical pain upon herself. Mind you, she also smashes her husband's testicles with a block of wood, followed by an act of sexual gratification. All this comes before a horrific act of self-mutilation, solidifying she as arguably the most controversial female character in cinema history. Number three, Travis Bickle, Taxi Driver. You talking to me? For the majority of Martin Scorsese's psychological thriller, Robert De Niro's character is mostly quiet and observant. Travis Bickle analyzes the world around him, all the while trying to make personal connections. But he's a social outcast with unresolved psychological issues, and his increasing frustration boils over in the film's violent climax. Bickle goes on a murderous rampage to free Jodie Foster's character from prostitution, which ultimately inspired a real-life attempted assassination of President Ronald Reagan. Despite his hero status within the film, Travis Bickle remains a highly controversial character as the ends don't always justify the means. Suck on this. Oh, 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 oh. Number two, Jar Jar Binks. Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Lisa Jar Jar Binks. By 1999, Star Wars was a lifestyle and the original films were revered as a holy trilogy. But when the computer-generated Jar Jar Binks emerged, his comedic relief didn't go over well with much of anyone. I speak. The ability to speak does not make you intelligent. While offering little to the plot, the buffoonish character has nearly 20 minutes of screen time, way too much for many Star Wars fans. Jar Jar's exaggerated demeanor, Jamaican-esque speaking pattern, and very existence have been heavily scrutinized. Me just tell them to buy me some space please. To many, Jar Jar waters down the franchise in an attempt to entertain younger viewers, and the character has become an international punchline due to his extreme unpopularity. Jar Jar Binks makes the Ewoks look like shaft. I've had enough, Tim. Number one, Alex DeLarge, A Clockwork Orange. This would sharpen you up and make you ready for a bit of the old ultraviolence. This movie anti-hero lives by a specific code of ultraviolence. Alex is a teenage sociopath, and he takes pleasure in others' pain. And naturally, with Stanley Kubrick behind the camera, the character's immoral behavior received special attention upon the film's release, especially considering Alex's flamboyant and unapologetic nature. Finally jailed due to his senselessly savage lifestyle, Alex receives unorthodox treatments for his sadistic behavior. Effectively nurtured to violence, Alex becomes a victim, leaving audiences split in their sympathies and divided over whether or not he was truly cured. I've learned my lesson, son. I see now what I've never seen before. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.